In this video, we're going to introduce how to conduct a calculation for collaborative filtering. This is the method many websites use for product recommendations. So in this example, we have six movies. Don't Look Up, Top Gun Maverick, Nope, Elvis, Minions, The Rise of Gru, and Black Phone. And we have the ratings for these movies from these seven customers. As you would imagine, in reality, when you are Amazon or Netflix, you may have thousands of movie titles and uh, millions of customers. But this calculation can easily scale up when you have more movies and more customers. To get a better idea about the basic idea of collaborative filtering, please re-watch the video for this week's lecture. In this video, we mainly focus on the operations. Our goal is to first calculate the similarity of each one of these movies comparing to Nope, and then use that similarity measurement to weigh the ratings that we received so that we can predict Gabrielle's rating on Nope. So to start, Let's first make some preparations. First, I'm going to calculate the mean rating for each person and for each movie. So the averages. So I'll calculate the mean here for each person. And also, I'll calculate the mean here for each movie. And this is straightforward, equals average of B7 to G7, close the parenthesis, and then enter, and then copy this down to all the individuals. And similarly, we do this equals average for each one of the movies, and select every everyone and select everyone and close the parentheses enter and then copy this all the way to black phone so that's the prep work and the next we want to calculate every other movie compared to nope now I'll copy the movie names over so that it's easier to see what is what. Control C, Control V, and make them wider so that's easier to read. All right, so now I have the names, the movies listed. And uh, the next calculation I need to do is I want to calculate each movie compared to the rating that Nope has. So remember the distance we'll talk about in the lecture video is equal to parenthesis this B7 minus in Nope D7. And uh, given that we need this formula to be copyable to the other places, we want to always compare to nope. So nope is in column D. So we want to lock the column, but not the row. So, so now if you tap the F4 key once, it will lock everything. And the second time, it will lock the rows. And the third time, it will lock the column. That's what we want in column D. And then close the parenthesis, and then take a square. So the square operation is on top of the number 6. So it's basically shift 6 to give you that uh, little arrow and then 2. So that gives you the square. And press Enter. So now we have the number put in. If we copy this down, you're going to see that we have a bit of a problem because look at this. 
for color, nope has no number, and don't look up is two and a half. And the problem is when there's an empty cell, Excel would treat it as zero, and the problem of being treated as zero is it will just square 2.5 and give you 6 2.5. So we actually need both cells to have numbers in order to make a calculation. Otherwise, we shouldn't calculate anything because this cell is missing. So which means we have to add this formula for this to be correct. So go back after equal, let's use if to do this. So if, parenthesis, and uh, I need both numbers to be larger than zero to make a calculation. So I'm going to do and, parenthesis, and would give me two or more conditions. So in this case, we want this cell B7 to be larger than zero comma, and we want this cell, D7, to be larger than zero. Again, I need to copy this, so I need to lock only the column, but not the row. So F4, 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 three times, and the dollar D7 is larger than zero as well. And then close that end, and then put in a comma. So if both numbers are larger than zero, then I will calculate this distance measure. And at the end, comma, if not, what do I do? I don't want to put in anything, so I will do quote and the negative sign, and then quote. I will just strike it out, doing nothing. And then close the parenthesis for if. So now we have a formula, and enter. So now if we copy this, you're going to see that whenever either of the cells is missing, it will not calculate any numbers. That's what we want. It only calculates the distance measure when both cells have values. Now we have that column. We can copy this to all the movies. And as a sanity check, you can see that this is something desirable that the movie's distance measure to itself is zero because the values are, are the same. So that actually is a nice feature that we want. OK, so now we have made the preparation here. So actually, in order to calculate distance, we want to sum this up across different individuals. So we are going to calculate distance here. And then from distance, we can calculate similarity. OK, so let me change this. So that's, they are the same. So distance is the sum across individuals. If it's not clear why we do the sum, go back to watch the lecture video. So the sum gives us the distance measure. Again, I want this to be normal. Now I copy this over so I can have the sum for each one of these movies compared to nope. And from the distance, we can actually calculate the similarity. So this is the formula I've already put there. So similarity is basically equal to 1 divided by parenthesis 1 plus the square root uh, of the distance I have calculated. SQRT will give you the square root parenthesis of this number here in cell I14. And then we close the parenthesis for the square root. And then we close the parenthesis for the denominator. And then enter. So that gives me the measure for similarity. Again, this number has a lot of zeros. Let's shrink the, shrink the decimal points to make it easier to read. And then I can copy this 
over. So as we have discussed, the similarity measure is between 0 and 1, where 0 means there's no similarity, 1 means there's perfect similarity, and that the movie is perfectly similar to itself. And just based on similarity measure here, you can see that. Let me conditional format this. So just based on the similarity measure here, you can see that the green ones are the most similar ones. And out of the movie itself, the other movie that is the most similar to Nope is Black Phone. And then if you want to predict ratings, Black Phone should receive more weights, right? Because this is the most similar to Nope. If someone likes Black Phone, chances are someone will like Nope as well. On the other hand, if a movie is very dissimilar, like Elvis, someone if someone likes Elvis, it really says nothing about whether that person would like Nope. So that's the whole idea of collaborative filtering. So next, we're going to calculate Gabrielle's adjusted rating comparing to the mean rating here across all the other movies. So in this row, let me calculate Gabrielle's adjusted rating. compared to the main rating that uh, she gives out. So what we are going to calculate is basically equals. Remember that uh, Excel treats empty cells as zeros. So we don't want that to happen. So we are going to use an if directly here. So if this number is larger than 0, then we are going to do calculations. If not, we are not going to do it. So if it's less than 0, we're going to calculate the difference between this rating minus and the average given out. So this is just a adjustment. And again, we want to copy this formula over. So we're going to fix this cell in H13 and just use F4 and comma. So if it's not larger than zero. In this case, it means it's a missing value. We should not calculate anything. Again, we use quote, negative sign, quote, and then close the if formula and enter. So as you see here, because there's no value, it doesn't calculate anything. And if there is value, it should calculate something. So we copy this over, and we're going to see that the adjusted rating compared to the mean. So the positive value would mean this is one point above the mean rating that she gives out, and negative 2.5 means this is 2.5 below the mean rating that she gives. And then this similarity measurement we want this to be moved here based on whether there is a rating or not. So let's do Gabrielle's adjusted similarity. Okay. So it will be equals if if this is larger than zero, then we put the similarity in. If not, we're going to put nothing there. Enter. So now in this case, there's nothing there because there's no rating. We're not taking that similarity measure. Let me center this and copy this over. So here, as you see, only when there's a rating, we have copied the similarity measures over. So now we're going to calculate an adjustment of uh, Gabrielle's rating, and then we'll add back to our mean rating. So adjustment. So remember, this adjustment is using the similarity measures to weigh the adjusted ratings and then sum it together. So what we want is basically this multiplied by this, this multiplied by this, this multiplied by this, 
and this multiplied by this, the weights, and then sum them together, and then we're going to divide that by the total weights that we have put in. So to calculate this multiplication and then sum up, there is a fairly useful formula. It's called sum product. So what this formula does is first it calculates the product. So in this case, product means multiplication times. So first it does the multiplication and then after everything has been multiplied, it's going to do a sum calculation. So what this is, is parenthesis, it will calculate this, comma, and this. So it's basically going to calculate each element to multiply together and then sum up all the multiplications. So this is a sum product. And this has to be weighed by the total adjusted similarity that we have. So this should be divided by the sum by Gabriel's total adjusted similarity. And close the parenthesis and enter. So that adjustment is how much the rating would shift from Gabriel's average. So then the final rating prediction would it be equal to this adjustment plus her average rating and then enter. So in this case, what we have basically Gabrielle's, our prediction of Gabrielle's rating for NOPE is 3.824. So it's a reasonably high rating. Chances are she might actually see it. That concludes the video for collaborative filtering.